Hey guys, and welcome to another distribution run through and another Linux Mint distribution run through. I know I've been doing a ton of these on my channel and there hasn't been that much difference between them, but uh, since I am basically now at this point going through the list of Linux Mint distributions, as per your demands, I would like to add, then I, I'm not going to do all of them except XFCE. Um, and the reason I'm not going to do all except XFCE is, first of all, Linus Torvalds actually uses. XFCE is his primary desktop environment on, I believe it's a Fedora distribution, but I could be wrong on that one. Um, but also, I do like, I've got a soft spot for XFCE. Now, I'm an LXDE guy, and Gould, if you don't know what these uh, initialisms mean, you are probably quite confused right now. But yeah, um, and XFCE isn't a, a million miles away from LXDE. In fact, XFCE to me is probably the second best out there. Only problem I've actually had with XFCE is... Um, is that it's a little bit quirky when it comes to a few occasional bugs. Not massively. Like little little changes, little maybe an applet might disappear out of there. Nothing, oh, sorry, I'm just knocking the microphone. Um, nothing like quirky, nothing like, n nothing too like deal breaking or anything like that. But, um, but, but definitely something to, to make me appreciate the perfect stability of LXDE. LXDE, I have never had anything go wrong with LXDE. I've had a few like features that I would kind of expect to be there not be there and I've had to find some way around that because LXDE, again, it's even more lightweight lightweight than XFCE. It's about as lightweight as you're going to get and still get a full dis um, desktop environment. Uh, and when I say um, a full desktop environment, like the things that are, are missing for me are, are very, very, very minor things. So, okay, um, XFCE. Just right out of the box, looks beautiful. Um, uh, XFCE has traditionally not perhaps been the best looking uh, desktop environment out there. That being said though, there are some eye candy options for those of you that are interested. But, but I think, and please feel free to correct me if I'm stereotyping here, that people who tend to use XFCE are perhaps a little more interested in usability than eye candy. Could be wrong there. And also, don't get me wrong, I, you know, like I appreciate eye candy as much as the next person when it comes to a distribution. I do like the tra semi-transparent effects or whatever, but they do sort of grate on me over time. But I do like the fact that people make efforts to put them in there, and I think that it, there is value in making an operating system look nice, especially, again, when it appeals to uh, trying to make Linux, uh, Linux in general, Linux-based operating systems. If you're going to make them mainstream, you are going to have to bring in eye candy, even if it's not something that I or other sort of OS enthusiasts might consider to be particularly important. Some people will consider it to be a, uh, a deal breaker, maybe even not consciously. You go around asking everyone that uses their operating system how important is the actual look of an operating system. 99% of people will say not very at all. But when you bring in eye candy, you also bring this degree of polish and this atmosphere of professionalism, which I think is something that really does change how people look at a distribution. Um, okay, so Linux Mint XFCE, and like I say, it looks very clean. Comes with a panel. XFCE comes with a panel. Um, very, um, very Linux Mint style panel. You can stretch that right out if you wanted. If you wanted big panel, big panel. I don't know. I don't like big panels. Don't like moving my my mouse. Make you know. I don't like my mouse to make longer journeys than it has to. Again, like I say, it might sound like a bit of an OCD point, but. To me, efficiency is how long it takes you to get your program up and running. And if you have to, again, if you have to move from mouse to keyboard, I consider that to be something of a fault because, again, it takes time, but it also breaks your flow of work. Um, but that being said, I do like the option there that you can actually be able to search for some LibreOffice stuff. Um, but also, I, I like, you know, if you can stick with the mouse, which you can do, you can just go droop, droop, LibreOffice stuff, multimedia. Like the responsiveness on this one, actually. This is very quick, um, and I like the look of it. Um, I I won't lie. This is probably more preferable than Mate. I think Mate is just reinventing XFCE at this point. Just looking at this. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section below. But XFCE and Mate both. Um, oh yeah, when I when I did ask in an earlier video, what really was the difference in Cinnamon and Mate? And one of you guys said that there's actually quite a big difference in system resources. So um, I'll certainly you know. That's definitely a thing. But uh, Mate, or M-A-T-E, or Mate, whatever they sort of call it. Um, again, just it's kind of just like sort of reinventing XFCE from, uh, from what I can tell. But anyway. 
Okay, so without further ado, let's crack on with the install process. Now, I actually had to cut away uh, for a moment there and actually readjust my virtual hard disk. I set the install or set this virtual hard disk at 8 gigabytes, which is what I usually do. Unfortunately, though, there's a bit of a quirk with this system. It requires 8.6 gigabytes of available disk drive, disk drive space. That's a bit unusual. The KDE version, which I installed, actually on the very same virtual disk, so we certainly know that it fit within the 8 gig there. Um, for some reason, the um, XFCE version requires a little more space, and that is quite unusual. Actually, just going to have a quick look here. It's the same install bundle, by and large. Yep, comes with the GIMP, comes with accessories. Comes with now that is interesting, and I can't quite place that. It comes with a full library. Again, it comes with VLC, which is something that a lot of people often find themselves installing afterwards, um, but not many distributions actually take the initiative to actually put it on as part of the bundled software, but Mint does, and that's one of the reasons why I like Mint as much as I do. Um, so this is the exact same install process as with the Cinnamon, the Mate uh, pr uh, versions. I think those are the only two. The KDE, of course, has its own install process, which is very similar, but um, uh, just as user friendly and just as straightforward, but it just for some reason has its own uh, has its own install process. Um, yep. Yeah, so this is all same old, same old. I know it's a short password. Log in automatically. Because um, yeah, like you say, you usually ex associate XFCE with being more lightweight, more quicker with system resources and things like that. Maybe even a little less on the disk space as well. I mean, it might not be the first thing that you jump to when, with a lightweight distribution, but I think maybe that's because it's assumed or expected or whatever. But um, again, a little bit interesting there, a little bit interesting. Do you really need a Mate and an XFCE um, set of distributions? Probably not. I think this is probably, I think um, XFCE actually is a community built one. So what we can sort of deduce from that is that we know that the community demands an XFCE spin, um, which came out a couple of days after the KDE uh, spin as well. But again, I think with this XFCE, I don't think you really need Mate. I think they, they are so similar, so near identical, that um, and so similar on the amount of system resources that they use, I think you're really reinventing the wheel. Um, I think you're you're sort of you know you're forking various projects and ending up with the same result, but with twice as amount of work you're putting in. I don't know. Um, that's just a thought. Do you think? Do you guys see a difference in XFCE to uh, Mate? I call it Mate because that's how it's spelt in the UK. I know it's supposed to be pronounced Mate, but I'm I'm not saying Mate. Um, I'd rather I'd rather just stick to using XFCE all my life if that's the uh, if that's the alternative. But um. But yeah, I mean, this is pretty identical. Well, not uh, near identical to the Cinnamon as well. Like Linux Mint follow a user interface pattern, a path. Um, and it's good to do that. It's good to have that continuity and that consistency and those laid out straightforward user interface ideas that that you can move towards rather than just a let's try and make it as shiny as possible and see type of attitude that some distributions do have. Or a lot of distributions, of course, they make the distributions for themselves. Um, you know, and sometimes they can they can be a little bit on the insular side. Um, but I think Linux Mint is, is a particularly good distribution across the board at discussing these things with the community. And I think they, you know, they listen to the community in a, in a, in a great way. And this is reflected in, it's reflected most visibly in the software bundles uh, and most immediately. But Linux Mint has really not changed much over time, really not changed much over time. Um, the GNOME 2 release is, is near identical to this release, and this release is near identical. Th you know, th there are some differences to the cinema and the mate in terms of what it looks a little bit, but like if you can use one, you can use the other no matter how much or little you know about computers. Um, yeah, like I say, this con consistency and continuity is something that Linux Mint developers clearly strive for, which kind of, I guess, makes me put it as a talking point that KDE, the KDE spin has its own um, install process. Uh, that That is something that just breaks that continuity 
I'll be it fine in a, you know in, in, in maybe it's a maybe it's an install process that uses the Qt libraries or whatever uh, you know maybe there is a like an under the hood reason why they've included there's obviously a reason but um and I, and I would imagine it's an under the hood reason I can't I can't imagine that KDE people would really care which way or the other you know I think the uh, you know the, the the decision might have come from uh, something that uses existing Qt libraries that already come bundled you know or whatever um but yeah, definitely, like XFCE, mate, I'd start to think that they're overlapping in a very serious way. This is, it, like, this panel is, for all intents and purposes, like, the, the icons here on the right-hand side, Cinnamon and Mate, they're on the left. It's the same freaking panel, though, really, uh, if we, if you know, if we look at it, it's not, uh, there's not much difference or special. The software bundle's pretty identical, and again, you know, I'm saying it like it's not a good thing. It is. It's a fantastic thing. It's something essential to bringing Linux Mint to the masses, to put some kind of grandiose political point to it. But yeah, like, um, yeah, like if it's going to go mainstream, it's, you know, it's going to need solid uh, UI, uh, I, you know, like a good solid idea of where the UI is heading. And, and the fact that the last 10 distributions of Linux uh, Mint have, have been near identical, at least the last 10, I mean, you could even take it back as far as Goodness knows how far back you can take it, but it's, you know, like it really hasn't changed that much. It's it's easy enough that anyone can just pick it up and run with it. Uh, and I think by and large, the only the only criticism I ever really have with Linux Mint is that it just isn't um, deployable everywhere. It's not deployable uh, on really quite sort of like 10, 15 year old machines. I think it's just a little bit too, um, a little bit too, um, resource hungry for that not by much and like I say it's not a huge culprit if you're installing it on a five-year-old machine that's fine um, but like if you, yeah if you go down the 10 15 you, you have to really go with Ubuntu uh, and Ubuntu is in my opinion the perfect deployment for all incredibly lightweight um, uh, requirements um, and I have I, I recently made a Ubuntu deployment 14.04 on a machine that was about 10 years old and it's originally ran XP and it turned a virus ridden because my god since they stopped supporting XP my lord the viruses um, it, it basically turned a virus riddled um, near brick into a uh, the, the computer that it was 10 years ago uh, the computer in question was it was being used for the, the regular old office internet browser type stuff it wasn't used for any kind of specific um, unusual purpose and uh, the person that wanted me to take a look at it was actually thinking about buying a new machine spending about six seven hundred quid on a brand new machine um because they i don't know like i guess like it there we have it in our heads now that we have to upgrade hardware every 10 years when we don't like that that machine can do the same thing that it did 10 years ago the office thing you know the office type stuff it's made from pretty damn good hardware like if the hardware's lasted for 10 years minus a few replacements here and there that's a good machine don't throw it out like you know whoever was putting that machine together knew what they were doing so um you know that the, and the machine by and large that didn't even cost 600 quid when that machine was new it wasn't top of the range when it was bought and um yeah they were thinking about spe spending six seven hundred quid uh just to to upgrade to a windows 7 machine uh that does exactly the same thing of what it did then i said fuck no just stick on libun to Spend an afternoon getting to know how it works, and you won't need to spend that six, seven hundred quid. Uh, six, seven hundred quid in British pounds, that's about thirteen hundred dollars, US dollars. You know, that's, uh, that's a lot of money to save if you can just do it. And, uh, and Lubuntu did. Lubuntu saved those folks the upgrade process because they're like the, you, don't, you know you don't need if you, they don't, you know if you don't if you're not using multimedia and if you're not using um, uh, you know, if you're not playing games and you're not using multimedia, you don't need a fast computer. That's like, you don't. You can use a second-hand 10-year-old computer and that will do your job for you. Like, you know, I, people, we, you know, we do have it in our heads that we have to spend hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of pounds on computers when we don't. A second-hand 100-quid computer, you know, will do the job that most people require out of their machines. But, uh, but then again, it's the adverts and it's the you know, it's the it's the corporate nature of the proprietary software and hardware world as well. But there you go. And also, of course, not to mention that um, with XP and a machine that old, um, 
getting hardware to run on it, getting your wireless cards working on it, getting your printer working, getting your scanner working. That's a nightmare, right? A 10-year-old computer, do you remember? Do you remember the hassle that we went through getting hardware working on that on those machines back then? Yeah, right? One deployment, one deployment of a Lubuntu installation. And again, like I say, I know I'm doing a Linux run through at this point and talking about Lubuntu. The same thing would apply like, you know, with, with Linux Mint, of course, they all run on the same base, but um, one deployment of uh, Lubuntu, two hours later, up and running. Two hour, two hour deployment, that machine doesn't need to be touched now for another at least two years. Lubuntu has a three year support cycle on it, but Ubuntu has a five year one. I know some of you guys were uh, debating about the support release schedule of Lubuntu. For some reason, it's three years, not the five years that's supported by Ubuntu. Um, to be honest, it's a desktop machine. Either is fine. Three to five years, probably be upgraded into two and a half. Um, and yeah, like, I mean, none of the aggro that we went, you know, the, that you go through with the XP machine to get wireless drivers and all that kind of stuff up and running. Lubuntu took care of that. Bam, right out of the box. Install the codex, bam, right out of the box. It's uh, adding the PPAs took uh, 10, 20 minutes, I don't know. Um, and yeah, we had, you know, wireless out of the box, scanner out of the box, printer out of the box. Uh, our pr printer wasn't out of the box. You had to install the HP device extras, but that was like, again, five minutes, no problem. Um, possibly, the you know, possibly could have been a little more like, you know, it was easy for me, uh, but possibly if I wasn't there um, sort of guiding them through the process, might have been a little tricky, might have required a little bit of Googling um, to try and get the answers done. So like I said, there are perhaps a few strides that Linux can still make in the usability side of things. But like I say, Lubuntu just revived a 10-year-old machine and um, and saved uh, saved a couple of people six seven hundred quid thirteen hundred US dollars. That's you know that's that's a big feat for Ubuntu. Um, come on, we don't need these extras. I don't. Yeah, sometimes it just wants to install all the languages. Um, come on, skip it. We don't. We need all these lang like I, I you know I need one language, maybe Welsh, two, two maybe two. But uh, I don't know. It, it, it does. It wants to install because that's one of the, that's one of the things about Ubuntu, isn't it? Eventually, Ubuntu want to make it so that anyone from who speaks any language, everything from you know Yiddish to Welsh to Gaelic, you know, um, that 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 no matter what language you speak, um, you you'd be able to crack open an Ubuntu distribution. It should be able to work out the box. That's you know, that's their dream, and they're perfectly you know. An admirable one as well, as well, I guess. So, um, so like I say, these install processes as well, very quick, very speedy. Um, I remember when you know when you when you used to do a, a Windows reinstall or an install, and it used to take it take you the afternoon. Um, no more, no more. This is the, this is the second install video I did uh, KDE uh, earlier today, actually, and we can uh, and we can restart. And uh, yeah, so I did uh, I did KDE earlier today on this very same virtual machine with the very same settings, but slightly tweaked because obviously the hard disk was uh, that was a thing. Okay, so um, as usual with these things, I actually have to physically remove the uh, the attachment here if I'm not mistaken. So I'm just going to quickly take off the monitor capture. Um, and then I have to, yeah, power off. And then, uh, yeah, like physically remove. Well, I say f physically remove. Um, virtually remove in, you know. And then, uh, yeah, and then I can crack on the monitor capture again. And there we go. Just the quirks of running in a virtual machine. But like I say, um, again no surprises like like 
Linux Mint at this stage just couldn't phase me less. It does exactly what you want it to do straight out of the box every single time. No exceptions. It focuses on stability, uh, a common UI that we have come to know over the last couple of decades and become very, very comfortable with. And it doesn't want to challenge that because the operating systems shouldn't challenge that. They shouldn't have to find something new to pull out the bag and sell you every couple of years. Uh, it should be able to just work and work out of the box and that's what Linux Mint does and that's what Linux Mint does very 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 well um, they do it so well that they have many many distributions that do the exact same thing very very well they do this very very well they can you know they, they can just they can just do this you know it's they've proven that it's not sort of you know particularly you know it's not rocket science to actually make a distribution that people find easy to use and straightforward to use and to apply that user interface across various other desktop environments as well so you've got an irc chat room if you need help from the community you've got forums if you need help from the community tutorials if you need help from the community uh, you've got a software manager you've got an ideas pool because they do listen to what people have to say that's why the software bundle is so natural that's why you know the gimp is there that's why Firefox is there. Um, that's why Thunderbird is there and not Evolve. Like for some reason, I don't know who uses Evolve over Thunderbird. Thunderbird. Uh, VLC is there again, as well as the regular video uh, totem. I believe that is as well. I could be wrong actually. Um, it's got Pulse Audio uh, volume control, which again is it's a great way to take control over your sound devices. This is uh, you know. I mean, this should be 101 UI, but it's not. Other, so many, so, so many uh, distributions actually fail to get this right. Uh, and then you get Linux Mint that gets it right, and they gets it right in a stable way time and time and time again, and have been getting it right for a long time now. So they've become a very reliable friend to the Linux world, and they have certainly uh, shown us that there is a very strong market for the conservative UI that doesn't keep challenging our, our workflow or doing anything like that. It just, you know, it's that reliable old workhorse that you can just rely on to do what it says it's going to do. So, like I say, again, Linux Mint couldn't surprise me anymore, and that's a good thing, because uh, you shouldn't have to one day turn on your computer uh, only to find out that your start button is just, you know, flying all over the place like it does with Unity and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's stable, it's straightforward, it's easy to use, and you can, you know, you can deploy it in a lot of places. Um, maybe not as many as Lubuntu, but certainly, uh, it certainly uh, is, is, is not far behind. So, that's about it for me today. Um, the question that I would like to, you guys to take away and perhaps answer in the comments section below is, is there really a requirement for an XFCE version and a mate version? Now, considering that the XFCE version is actually put together by the community and by XFCE enthusiasts, we know that there's a demand for the XFCE version because it's it's that kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. It wouldn't exist if there wasn't a demand for it because it's demand and supply both come from the same place, the community. Mate comes from the development team, uh, as far, from what I understand. It's their second or in some people's eyes, first flagship distribution. But to me, it's the two are identical enough that you don't need both of them. Could you scrap mate and then just bring in XFCE into the fold? I think that would work. I think that would be uh, a better use of the resources. Am I wrong? Am I right? What do you guys think? Do you think there's room for the full, is it four now? Cinnamon, mate, XFCE, KDE? I mean, are they going to bring in an LXDE one? Would be kind of cool, but... Uh, I don't know. Are they even going to bring in some kind of Fluxbot, uh, not Fluxbot, Fluxbox uh, machination? Because that would be quite interesting. I remember when Fluxbuntu was a thing back a couple of years ago when um, when some people wanted to bring Fluxbox in as a as an Ubuntu Windows Manager desktop environment type of thing. It actually kind of looked like it could have done something, but never really took off. I guess, you know, people were happy with XFC or whatever, or at least putting together their own Fluxbox uh, setup. So anyway, guys, yeah, let me know down in the comment section below. That's about it for me today. Thanks very much for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.